I will begin with a word of prayer. All right. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Dear Father, we uh, thank you for this day. Thank you for these students. Lord, I just ask you to bless this class today, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. So, guys, I have a couple of uh, examples I should show you before we get back into the homework. Um, so let me get, get started here. So last time we discussed the integrating factor technique. Um, so let's do another example of that. So the integrating factor technique, we use it to solve dy dx plus py equals to q. I'll remind you the steps. Number one, identify p and q, put it in standard form. I'll call that thing star. Um, Point number two, you calculate the integrating factor i, which is going to be the exponential of the integral of p dx. Point number three, you multiply star by i. Number four, reverse product rule. Think through it. And step number five, integrate and solve for y. So that's the technique in a nutshell. We went through an example last time. We go through another example today here. Suppose I was trying to solve dy dx equals to Oh, I don't know, 3y plus the sine of x. All right. So the first order of business, of course, is to identify p and q. So before I can do that, I need to rewrite this, right? I take that, I rewrite it as dy dx minus 3y equal to sine of x. And, um, okay, so what's my P? I'll tell you Q. Q is sine X. Can you tell me P? I will take the answer from a CFAW. Yes, sir. Negative three. Negative three. <laughs> See? Even a CFAW can do it. There you go. Sorry. You guys are here just for one day. You're a convenient foil, you know? I mean, I usually would pick on Zach, but no Zach. I have to ask myself the question, when people name their child Zach, where does it come from? Why name your child Zach? Zachariah. Zachary? I I think it's biblical. That's optimistic. All right, let's see here. So we've now, oh, so that's step number one. Done? Nah, I was really hoping that was Zach. Two, um, I is the exponential of the integral. This, this integral I hope we can do. What's the integral of minus 3 dx? Right, or in our usual notation, e to the minus 3x, yeah? So there's your integrating factor. Step three, multiply by i. That gives us e to the minus 3x dy dx um, minus 3 e to the minus 3xy equals e to the minus 3 x sine x. See, part of the reasons differential equations is such a nice topic for the final in here is that it, it, it gives me a way to test two things at once. 
one differential equations, but the other integration, which of course you guys already know. Um, so this, step four, right, is where we do the reverse product rule. This is ddx of what? I'll do the easy part. Tired of this marker. Whoa. <laughs> no? Still haven't hit a student. Yep. Is it to the negative 3x times y? To the e to the negative 3x times y. E to the minus 3x times y. Yes. Now, we should think through that, though, right? If you differentiate this, what happens? You get e to the minus 3x times dy dx. That's one of the terms in the product rule. And then the derivative of e to the minus 3x, which is minus 3 e to the minus 3x at this term. So when we differentiate this, we get back to that. This is the reverse product rule. You're like, whoa, how'd that happen? Well, that's the method. That's the genius of the integrating factor technique, is that when you multiply by this factor, this forces this to happen. All right? OK. Um, I mean, I can derive this method, and, and I, do, I do give some derivation of this method when I teach Math 334. But for us in Calculus 2, this is just going to be a magic that we wield. All right? I mean, this is, I'm telling you what to do. You do it. All right? Calculate this i. You multiply. You reverse product rule. Now we have to integrate both sides, right? So we get e to the minus 3x y is equal to the integral of e to the minus 3x sine x dx. Yeah. Now, this is a non-trivial integral, so I'm going to have to do that over here, right? e to the minus 3x sine of x dx. Integrate by parts, right? So here's your dv1, here's your u1. This gives us um, minus e to the minus 3x cosine x plus the integral of... Um, cosine of x times minus 3e e to the minus 3x dx. So here I let, I let my u1, as I said, be e to the minus 3x. I let my dv1 be sine x dx. So that says that v1 is minus cosine x. And it says that du1 is minus 3e e to the minus 3x dx. And so this should be uv minus the integral of, of v du. I, I use the minus in here in, in the formula for integration by parts to cancel out. But I'm still stuck with the third minus over there. All right, let me clean it up a little bit. So we've got minus e to the minus 3x cosine x minus 3 times the integral of e to the minus 3x cosine of x dx. Let me take a breath here. Are there any questions? Yeah. I mean, I can rewrite it like this if it's helpful to you guys. So those minuses cancel. All right, so we're not done. This we're going to call dv2, and this will be u2. And so we've got so du2 minus 3e to the minus 3x dx. v2 is sine x, right? So I do integration by parts again to go from here to here, right? And what do I get? e to the, well, excuse me, minus e to the minus 3x cosine x, minus three parentheses are your friends, um, uv2, u2v2, which is otherwise known as e to the minus 3x sine x, yeah? 
and um, minus the integral of um, sine x times du2, which is minus 3 e to the minus 3x dx. Close my friendly parentheses. Let's clean that up a bit. All right, so we've got minus e to the minus 3x cosine x and then minus 3 e to the minus 3x sine x. And how many, oh, what do I got here? Minus 3 times minus times, I get three minuses. That's a net minus. And how many numbers do I got? 3 times 3, which is 9 integral of e to the minus 3x sine x dx. All right. So now we have, we have looped back to where we started, right? And so if you look at this, you're like, will you, will you at some point review for the final? Yes. That's happening right now. Because this is an integral which, you know, I don't know, this is nine minus 9i, nine right? I almost always have this integral or something like it on the final, right? It was on your test, wasn't it? Test one, yeah. So solving for i, we have that the integral is uh, apparently 1 tenth e to the minus 3x. I'll put a minus out front, cosine x plus 3 sine x plus a constant, of course. So, obviously, the integral of e to the minus 3x sine x dx is just minus 1 tenth. e to the minus 3x cosine x plus 3 sine x plus a constant. I mean, everybody can see that, right? Well, I don't think that's at all obvious, right? But that's the kind of thing we learned to integrate earlier this semester. And now we can solve for y. Y is minus one tenth cosine x plus three sine x plus c e to the three x. So any questions about this example? All right. So I at least have one homework question that's on, sub on substitution. So it'd probably be good for, for me to at least show you an example on substitution, yeah? Um, so let me work something similar to like, I think it's maybe the next to last problem in your homework is like this. So I'm just anticipating you're going to ask me a question. Did everybody have this uh, exciting and yet irrelevant number? Wait a second. All right.
Now, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't ask you guys to solve all second order different, differential equations, all right? Like, that's a problem that we leave for differential equations, but it's, it's good, it's healthy for us to look at a few of them, which we can solve by the methods that I show you in here, all right? And so this is such a problem. I mean, there's a couple different ways to attack this. Um, any ideas? How would you guys suggest I solve this? What is the, let's, 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 let us explain that the y prime here means, well, you guys choose. Do you want it to be dy, dy dx or dy dt? Votes for x. Votes for t. Ah, figures. So dy dx. Patrick's like, I will not conform. <laughs> Very good. Oh. Have you all complied? All right, that's good. There we go. It's been counted. Our daily census is done. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I don't know. You know, as I look at this, there, there was one. Okay, I'll show you how I was going to do it. I was going to let. I mean, I think I see an easier way to do it now that I'm looking at it with you guys. Let v equal y prime. Then, oh, actually, I'm going to go back and Patrick. I like Patrick's idea more. Sorry, guys. Patrick wins t, because then then the velocity makes. I don't have to say something weird about velocity not being velocity. Like this would be the y velocity, v is dy dt, yeah? So if the v is dy dt, then what's v prime equal to? v prime is y prime prime, yeah? And what, is ha what happens with our differential equation? y prime prime minus 3y prime equals to 0 translates into, under the substitution, what do we get? Just v prime, right? Minus 3v equal to 0. Let me rewrite that in the differential notation. So we're looking at dv dt minus 3v equals to 0. How would you guys like us to, how would you, how would you like me to solve this? I, I can think of two ways. That was not a, that was a, okay. Be careful not to misconstrue head scratching for, for answering. Um, I mean, this is the right, this is a linear differential equation. It's the right format. It's of the form dy dx equal, plus py equals to q, thinking of x being t, right? It's the right pattern. It is a linear first order differential equation. We could use the integrating factor technique to solve it. Yeah. Or we could do separation of variables, right? So separation of variables, that would look like dv over v equals minus 3 dt. Integrate, integrate. We get the natural log, the absolute value of the velocity is equal to minus 3t plus a constant. We solve for v, we get absolute value of v is e to the c, e to the minus 3t. Therefore, the velocity is plus or minus e to the c, e to the minus 3t, which finally, after the dust settles, we've got some constant v naught times e to the minus 3t. So yes, we could, we could solve that by separation of variables. Absolutely, there it is. Yep. Uh-oh. Aw, oh, man. Why couldn't have you said that like five minutes ago when I started doing this problem? Wait, wait, so, wait so long. To Wait so long to tell me that. It's not nice. I'm just kidding. To be clear, I'm just kidding. I've learned that you have to explain your jokes. For every 20 people that get them, there's one that doesn't and is offended. It's the world we're living in. Comedy is dying a slow but sure death at the hands of pseudo-intellectuals. So would we agree? And I think that's the, I mean, I don't, I, I like that way of solving it. Let me just show you what the solution looks like with the integrating factor technique, because in some sense it's even easier. What would the integrating factor for this problem be? If we solve this by integrating factor technique, how would that go? What is the integrating factor for this problem? So 
So since this is a t is the independent variable, the integrating factor is integral in t. And so the integrating factor is actually e to the minus 3t. If I multiply this by e to the minus 3t, I get e to the minus 3t dv dt minus 3 e to the minus 3 tv equals to 0, which is almost verbatim what my last example was. But I think you're going to find the integration in this example much more pleasant, although less helpful for your final. Let's see here. e to the minus 3 tv. So what does that tell you? If I have the derivative of e to the minus 3t times the velocity is equal to 0, what does that tell you about e to the minus 3t times the velocity? It equals a constant. That's exactly it. So e to the minus 3t times the velocity is equal to some constant. Let's call it c1. And so you can solve for v. Now, great. So we, we just found the same solution with a slightly different letter, but there it is again. So separation of variables works. Integration by parts works. Are we done, though? Yeah. Oh, so we still need to solve for y, right? To solve the original equation, we're trying to find the goal here. Find y as function of t, right? So how do I do that? So the finishing blow we have dy dt equals to uh, a bit 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 what do you guys want me to use want c1 or v naught which you want c1 or v naught what's that oh cuz i can't do algebra Hey, at least I made an error in both, right? Just to be fair. And kind of this, hey, the same error, and yet in a different way. As if I'd planned it. You're like, as if. Let's see here. C1 e to the 3t. Yeah, fine, you got me. e to the 3t. And so, um, I, I mean, how do you solve such an equation? Do you need separation of variables? No, you just need calculus 1. We learned in calculus 1 to undo a derivative integrate, right? So integrating both sides, what do I get? I get y is the integral of c1 e to the 3t dt, which, of course, is 1 third c1 e to the 3t plus c2 um, plus c2. So there you go. That's the solution. And again, since this is a second order problem, we expect there to be two arbitrary constants in the solution, right? Unless more data is given. Like one of your homework problems, I give you data. I tell you y of 0 is 1, y prime of 0 is 0, something like that, and say solve the second order differential equation. I think I kind of half did that problem for you yesterday, or the day before yesterday. Eh, sorry about that. Any other ideas? Yep. Because I knew there were going to be two. Uh, yeah. Do you guys have any? Yep. Sub back in. What do you mean? Back into here. In what sense? Well, I, I, I asked, I said our goal was just to find y as a function of velocity. Now, you're wondering. I think you're, asking, you're thinking about what we were doing yesterday, which is finding velocity as a function of y. So how would we find y? How would we, you know, follow-up question, different question, different question, but how to find v as a function of y. Now, Hannah is right. We could do the most horrible, well, 
not the most horrible, but it would be a rather horrible thing. One way we could find v as a function of y is algebraically. Right, we could solve, we could take this, we could solve this for t, right? And then we could take that t and shove it in here, and that would give us v as a function of y. Right? Is that how, I mean, but there's an easier way, which I taught you, well, tried to teach you yesterday, and that was this. We're looking at y prime prime minus 3 um, y prime equal to 0. So I could rewrite that as um, dv dt minus 3v equals to 0, right? But the thing I, I showed you was that we could take this and rewrite it as dy dt dv dy minus 3v equals to 0, which in this case is v dv dy minus 3v equals to 0. So you could solve this. If you solved that differential equation, that would figure out what v is as a function of position y. That would give you the same answer as if we did the algebra you were just suggesting, namely solving our solution for t and plugging it into the velocity equation. We can solve this. Let's solve it. We're solving dv dy minus 3 equal to 0. If I divide that by v, I get this, right? dv dy minus 3 equal to 0. Can we solve that? Should we need dv dy equals to 3? What's v equal to? I mean, you could do separation of variables, right? Here, I'll do separation of variables just to be cute. But really, I'm just integrating both sides, right? V is equal to 3y plus some constant. So there's the velocity as a function of position. The velocity is 3 times the position plus a constant. It might be fun to actually solve this. Solving this for t would give you what? Can you solve this for t? It's 3 times y minus c2. Divided by c1. Natural log that thing. One third of that. And so if you plug that, if you take this, and you plug it in here, the thirds cancel, the three and the third cancel, and you get exponential log, which cancels, and you're just left with 3y minus um, c2 over c1. Work out. And I think I'm, well, anyway. Actually, I said I was going to answer your homework questions. I should probably get around to that, huh? Yeah. Ah, I was hoping one of you would ask that. So it was pointed out just now that if you have both eyes open and you're thinking, you could also just look at this as DDT of y prime minus 3 and immediately conclude that y prime minus 3 is equal to a constant. I am totally on board with that line of thinking. Completely allowed. Yes, a third way of thinking about this problem. This is a nice problem. There's like a lot of different ways to solve it. That, that's, a, that's a very good step, though, and that's actually how I often solve differential equations in the wild, so to speak. If it doesn't fit a standard pattern, you look for this happening. Anytime you can integrate, it makes the problem a little bit better. So you guys have questions about homework? I, I got the thing. I'll try to get it down here in a second. So for those of you who are CFA, if you um, if you'd like to see more of my um, exciting teaching, if you go to um, James Cook Math, I have a YouTube channel by that that title. 
and I've been putting most of my lectures up there since about 2015. So they're, um, I mean, good, bad, in between, they're all there for the most part. Let's see here. So did you guys have any remaining questions about your, about your homework? 101? 108, okay. Um, one thing I should mention to you guys is I won't be here Monday, but we'll have class. It will be a bonus activity, all right? And I have asked, um, yes. Yes, Sam is, uh, Samuel, I've asked Sam to uh, come and help you, actually not work, work with you, not against you, to, to conquer my bonus, my bonus te prop problem. I'm going to be asking you guys to work in groups of four as opposed to two, so, you know, a little bit, little bit easier. And, um, you know, it's a Monday, so I'll, I'll, I think I'll, I'll probably have eight to ten problems. I'll try to, uh, try to put a couple differential equation things in there just to make sure you guys have a chance to, you know, sharpen your skills before the actual math battle, which will happen when? Thursday. Thursday, yeah. But, yeah, I'm hoping that uh, Sam comes and hosts that for me. They're leaving. It's a protest against Sam hosting it. I understand. Very good. Stick to your principles. <clears throat> so, what, which guys did you ask me about? You guys, 108. We're supposed to expand x log x as a Taylor series centered at 2. All right. Um, So you want to rewrite this as sum of, say, cn x minus 2 to the n, right? The question is how, how, to, how to do that, right? And I, I gave you a big hint, which is to use the formula for the logarithm we've, we've already derived, right? Natural log, what was it? 1 plus u. How's it go? sum n equals 0 to infinity minus 1 to the n over n plus 1 times u to the power n. Is that right? Oh, n plus 1. Okay. I changed my n to a k. Other way around, actually. Changed the k to an n because, I don't know, because I did. No particular reason. So given, we're given this, right? How would we use that wonderful formula to find the power series expansion for G? Any ideas? So this is one of those ones where I'd say doing, yep. do the x plus 1, x minus 1 thing. I would say that's in the right spirit of things. But I think the fundamental insight is that x is equal to x minus 2 plus 2. Oh, yeah. Right. And um, so we have x minus 2 plus 2, right? Or maybe, maybe we should even use u. Do you, want to, do you guys want to take that for a spin, see how it looks like? Instead of putting x minus 2 here, we could even say that this is equal to u plus 2, yeah? So, in other words, x is equal to u plus 2, right? This is my u. And then I have natural log of Oh, I'm, 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 already, I'm already not liking it. <laughs> I'm already not liking it. I'm sorry, guys. I, 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 you know, I have trouble making decisions. There we go. X 
minus 2 plus 2. The natural log, though, ah, the natural log. What do we got here? X, yeah. So, of course, that's 1. Hmm. Hmm. What to do about that? How can I make that X bend to my will? I mean, I guess I can add and subtract 1. I'm still a little bit not sure what to do after that. I mean, see, because I really want, I need to somehow, oh, I see what I need to do. I should add and subtract 2 here. I don't mind helping you guys with this one because this is a little bit, a little bit tricky. The arithmetic here is a little bit tricky. So, in order to, I know, I know what to do with things of the form one plus u, right? But I also want x minus two in my expansion. So I've got an x minus two, right? But I don't have a one now. But what can I do? I could, I could factor a two out, right? 2, 1 plus x minus 2 over 2. Now we're in business because we know that the natural log of a times b is what? Properties of logs, log a plus log b, right? So this, we've got x minus 2 plus 2 natural log of 2, right, plus the natural log of 1 plus x minus 2 over 2. And now I can, now I can make this substitution, right? I can, I can identify that in this one, think of u, quote unquote, equal to x minus 2 over 2, right? And so what do we get? We get x minus 2 um, plus 2 times the natural log of 2 plus x minus 2 plus 2 times what? So now I'm going to use the given expansion for log of 1 plus something. I have minus 1 to the n over n plus 1 and um, 1 over 2 to the n plus 1, x minus 2 to the n plus 1. And past that, you just need to like multiply things through and collect, you know, collect like terms, clean it up, yeah. Already at this stage, if I asked you, you know, what's like the fortieth derivative? What's the fortieth derivative of g at two? You could answer that question, yeah. Could you answer that question, given this? Our goal would be to identify the coefficient of the x minus 2 to the power 40 to, term, right? So the coefficient of x minus 2 to the power 40 term would be equal to, by Taylor's theorem, g the 40th derivative at 2 over 40 factorial, right? Can you tell me what, where do we get the 40th power in here? So you, you need to, 
well. All right, so any, any takers? First of all, is it coming from this? Irrelevant, right? So it's got to come from this mess. So one thing it could come from is just the 2 times all this, right? If I have 2 times all this, how do I get x to the power 40 in that? n equals to what? I want n plus 1 to be equal to 40. I choose n equal to 39, yeah. So if I put n equals to 39, what's this stuff? It's 2 times, you know, well, times minus 1 divided by 40, right, times 2 to the, <laughs> 2 to the 40th power. Whoa, that big? So that's one of the things, but there is more. There is more. What else is there? Notice that you could also have this guy times this with n equals to what? See, because that would give me n plus 2. So that would mean n equals to 38 from that term in the, uh, this, this expression. You know, n equals 38 also contributes a 40th power. And so that would give me, you know, 2 times, well, 1, because 38 makes this minus 1 to the n term positive, divided by, what did I just say, uh, 39, I think. And, um, yeah, because 38 plus 1 is 39, and then 2 to the 39, right? That's equal to the 40th derivative. Evaluated at 2 over 40 factorial. Yep. How are you relating the What I'm saying is that, generically speaking, g of x is equal to the Taylor series generated by g of x because g is analytic. But the Taylor series of g of x expanded about 2 is this. Which means, although my, this is a, yet another n, what that means though is that the coefficient of the x to the power n has a significance of being the nth derivative of g evaluated at the center point, which here is 2. So to calculate the 40th derivative, I have to identify everything that produces something that appears next to the x minus, x minus 2 to the 40th power. So I'm just focusing on the numbers which appear next to x minus 2 to the 40th power, which I believe are those. Yep. <gasps> oh, good question. The 2 should not be there. Thank you. Because there's no 2 over here. Very good. Excellent question. Sorry, this is about like the fourth or fifth time I've done this thing, you know? Well, oh, one last thing I wanted to show you. See this? This is a GeoGebra applet which will visualize the direction fields I was doing last time. See this? What's that? That's numerical error is what that is. But anyway, see what's happening is it's, 
uses some iterative al algorithm to generate the solution, and when it hits, this is like special point in it, and it breaks the algorithm. Uh, anyway, I shut up. I was going to show you this guy today, but. I